Hey everybody, thanks so much for being with me today for Grace with Paul Gray. We're finishing up a week where we've been talking about the parable of the prodigal son in Luke 15. And here are the cliff notes of that parable. The setting is it's hardcore Jewish culture 2,000 years ago. Most people's whole lives then revolved around religion, which was based on the law, keeping the rules. And there were very strict penalties for breaking the rules. It all revolved around the Hebrew scriptures, which we call the Old Testament, which is also referred to as the law. The law contained facts as far as the Jewish people were concerned. For example, if a child over the age of 12 publicly disrespected their parents, the parent was to take them to the public square and the proud religious law keepers would stone them to death, literally pelt them with the largest rocks they could lift and throw and kill them. People in that society had an incorrect view of God, we now know. They believed that God was harsh, punitive, angry, list-keeping, hard to please, vindictive, and unless you did everything right according to the law, God would curse you and vent his wrath on you. They believed that because that's what their holy book and their destructive religion said. They believed it was a fact that God was like that. The religious people were all about judging and condemning and excluding people who weren't like them who broke their rules. Jesus told that group point blank one time that not a single one of them knew God or what God was really like. He told them another time, he said, you search your scriptures, the Hebrew scriptures, to find eternal life, and it's not there. He said, I am eternal life right here looking you in the eye, and you can't see it because you believe the facts that say otherwise. Jesus said he came to reveal the wor to the world what God is actually like, and he did. Now, at that time 2,000 years ago, those who weren't religious, who didn't keep all the rules perfectly, were judged by the religious people as unclean, unfit, and unworthy. The religious people derogatorily called them sinners. Jesus liked, hung out with, loved, and had an affinity for sinners. And Jesus criticized the destructive religious crowd. One day, Jesus was talking to a large group that included, quote, sinners, unquote, and the proud religious law keepers. He told them a parable, a story that illustrated a spiritual truth. We have incorrectly called that the parable of the prodigal son. It should be called the parable of the father's unconditional love. Jesus revealed to them what God was really like in the face of one of his kids representing all of us who broke all the rules and defiantly disrespected God. Remember, this boy didn't just have a one-night stand where he blurred the lines of morality a little bit. No, he violated virtually every rule they had, any one of which the facts said was punishable by being brutally stoned to death. And Jesus showed them what God is like when anyone does that, the worst of the worst. What God was like, Jesus said, is God loved the boy unconditionally, accepted him unconditionally, forgave him unconditionally, didn't even bring his sins up to him or hold them against him, still included him as a full-fledged member of the family, blessed him lavishly, and had a celebratory party for him. Jesus said, God is not a judge. Not a, God is not a strict moral taskmaster. God is a loving father. Now, the sinners who heard that in that crowd, just like every one of us, were thrilled to hear that God felt that way about them and their fellow sinners. However, the proud religious law keepers who thought they were right with God, thought they were God's favorites because of their rule keeping, they were repulsed and chastised God for being so good. Their scripture and their religion said, God's not that good. Even the boy's flesh and blood, blood brother chastised God, the father, for being so good. And he refused to give grace and unconditional love and acceptance and inclusion to his brother. And he refused to believe that his own father, God, could or should be that good. He thought the facts showed the boy should be condemned, not accepted. 
So what about you and me? Do do we believe that God is as good as Jesus says he is? I've had people, when I've told them that before, look me right in the eye and say, God is not that good. You're making him out to be better than he really is. Well, I'll take that chance. Do we believe God is as good as Jesus says he is, or do we refuse to accept what Jesus says because the Hebrew Scripture, the Old Testament, because of it saying God is not like that? Here's our takeaway from Luke 15. Jesus, the only one who knew God the Father, Jesus, who is God himself and who is just like the Father, tells us that God is all good. God is for everyone. God is the father of everyone. God loves everyone unconditionally. God has forgiven everyone. God chooses not to bring our sins up to us or even remember them. God accepts and includes everyone, and God throws a party for and celebrates with us to show the watching world how he sees us, no matter what the facts may have shown that we did that was wrong. And for you and me, get this, Jesus told the story so that we could know what God is like and how God sees us. And as good as that is, he also told the story so that we could know what is what God is like and how God sees everyone. That's really the point of the story, that God sees everyone like that. Until we see that God is that good for even the worst of the worst of the worst, we'll never be able to enjoy the celebration party that God is throwing right now and every second. Refusing to believe how good God is keeps us in bondage to sin, the sin of unbelief about how good God is. Jesus, truth, sets us free from that bondage when we take sides with him and believe him. We can believe him now and enjoy his party now, or we can refuse to enjoy the party for now. Jesus says, however, The truth is, not what we think the facts might be, that the truth is, there will come a day, and on that day, everyone will know that he and the Father and the Holy Spirit are that good. And we will know that we are in them, and they are in us. And there will be no more facts that dispute the truth. There will only be truth, unconditional love. These three remain. Faith, the faith of Christ, hope, Christ in you, the hope of glory, and love. God's unconditional love for everybody. You can take that and put it in your spiritual bank. Thanks, everybody. See you next time.